I will talk about associative definites in dark here, yeah, language in, in Vanuatu as you know by now. Uh, so the uh, a research background uh, of this talk, so uh, Daki has about 1,000 speakers. Uh, it's spoken uh, in on the island of Ambrim. These are the languages of Ambrim. There are five larger languages, and Daki is spoken here. It's better known as Potwato, but the uh, um, name of the uh, by the speakers of the language is Daki. So uh, for the re research background, I'm working on this language for about close to 10 years now. Um, uh, I haven't published very much about uh, the linguistics of this language, but a number of books, and in particular, a dictionary that I would like to highlight here. And it is sponsored over the years by Volkswagen Foundation and by the German DFB. Now, I would like to talk here about associative uh, definites in this language, uh, the development of a specialized uh, definite article uh, that is certainly shared by many other oceanic languages and I know also by some uh, languages outside of this, of this region, Uralic languages, for example, or Semitic uh, languages we can find with very similar developments. Um, uh, but I will also talk about other um, uh, anaphoric devices in uh, Dakie um, that you find, so some uh, are listed here. Uh, let's start first with the uh, subject markers and personal pronouns. Uh, we have uh, for subject markers this uh, paradigm here. You find uh, dual, paucal, and plural markers, and of course inclusive and exclusive distinctions. Um, uh, and they combine with modal markers uh, like realis, irrealis, negation, uh, distal, uh, and so on. And we find uh, also personal pronouns. Here are the personal pronouns um, with uh, the same number and, um, and a person distinction. There is one um, simplicism uh, in the second person, dual and paucal uh, to car, but uh, otherwise this is, is, is very similar here. Um, uh, some examples, we find this, uh, uh, the uh, uh, pronouns as uh, object pronouns, like here, which below, which is an object, the two roots uh, of actual go, and here we will say the blue then, uh, or we find them as subject uh, pronouns, and uh, also as, uh, as um, uh, yeah, here, subject and object uh, pronouns. This is not remarkable, I just wanted to list it here. Uh, we find relational nouns inflected for possessor. So this is um, uh, a paradigm uh, that combines relational nouns and um, and uh, um, and um, a possessive uh, construction. So yet would be my leg, and you see a full uh, paradigm here uh, uh, for my leg, your leg, and so on. And we find a similar uh, pattern for possessives. There are three uh, um, uh, possessive classifiers here, and this is an example of the, so sock, sun, and sun, and so on, is an example of the general uh, possessive classifier, yeah? Uh, and here are some uh, examples. I will not go uh, into that, except that this was something that was mentioned before, maybe by Mike, as far as I know. Uh, we do find as an anaphoric device the dual possessive uh, noun here, which is the possessive term for foot items, uh, which we translate here, the ones in the sea should carry theirs, understood their foot, and we just find the uh, possessive marker here as a uh, anaphoric device. So in the preceding uh, sentence, there wa uh, was talk about food. Yeah. Linkers, um, I think I I'll skip over that more or less. So um, uh, we find uh, that um, um, uh, 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 possessive um, <coughs> nouns like here for voice, uh, his voice, um, we find nouns like uh, Dölle um, without any linker, but followed by a noun, Dölle Japl uh, would be the voice of the man. Um, or here, the voice of God, uh, uh, in this case, uh, and and we find regular nouns um, uh, like um, uh, 
tool for for a garden, and they can be combined or modified by other nouns with a linker-like cell, for example, the garden of this woman. And we find the three uh, possessive classifiers here in the form of the linker as well, so me for, for drinkable items and e for edible items. Um, regular nouns can be uh, modified by uh, the transitive linker ne uh, as well, like for example in da ne sudan is work, a uh, transitive visor of thanks, uh, uh, verbs of thank. And this uh, transitive, uh, transitive visor is the same that we find uh, with verbs as well, like here t for look and t plus transitive visor is to look out for something, the same form here, making an item transitive. Now let's look at the uh, more specifically dedicated devices for anaphoric reference. We have um, um, uh, demonstratives that can be postposed to nouns. There are three of them for, for distal, for proximate, and one for proximate, which is mostly used for anaphoric uh, purposes. So yeah, yeah. And here are some uh, examples of this use. But most often they are combined uh, with the complementizer ke, forming one word, uh, uh, plus la, le, and ye. Um, and they can be used independently, like this, and they can be used with a noun, like this uh, house, for example, uh, but they are postposed. Um, like, for example, the uh, Dimalek Sele. Uh, uh, this was the this child uh, proximate. Yeah. Um, we find something like a development of a definite article with the form um, here, here, sorry, sorry, here for example, a bus stand here, uh, retourne is mentioned in, in this sentence here and then taken up again uh, in the second uh, sentence. And for this anaphoric use, we <laughs> find here very frequently, much more frequently than. Uh, uh, the other forms, Kella and Kille. Yeah. So we see uh, here something like the development of a definite article, I think. So there are other demonstratives, uh, local demonstratives, um, that can be formed with these um, um, uh, uh, forms. So uh, O from ot, uh, for place, plus K, plus one of these four items. We uh, uh, have a far distal here as well. Uh, uh, we have uh, a combination of the demonstratives with a focusing element, ye. Um, we find this only with la and le, not with ye here, not with the anaphoric, and it's, it's I think, quite clear that, that uh, an anaphoric item and a focusing item don't go together very well. Like here, for example, uh, I planted one flower here and one there. Um, no, this was not the, yeah. Uh, and we find mena demonstratives. Uh, I think they were mentioned uh, already too. So with a verbal or yeah, a verbal uh, root omma that is uh, inflected for modality, uh, which we find in a transitive use, uh, omma ne, uh, but also in, in these forms omela, omele, uh, um, yeah. uh, examples would be, for example, yeah, I look around like this, no, 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 uh, like this. Um. We also find null anaphors. Um, so in uh, general, as with many uh, oceanic languages, we find a distinction between intransitive predicates and transitive uh, uh, predicates. Um, some are inherently transitive, some are made uh, transitive with a verbal suffix, um, and um, some can be um, uh, made transitive. We've seen this with uh, T for look, T ne, with a transitive marker ne. Um, and um, uh, here are some uh, examples of, um, yeah, for example, this uh, extension of that normally would embed a clause which can be made transitive uh, requiring a nominal object with ne. Yeah. 
what is important is that uh, transitive predicates without object um, are typically interpre are well interpreted as definite, like uh, in this case, uh, <coughs> in case one goes and finds applicable um, um, uh, uh, Eastrim, sorry, not this case, Eastrim. Then plus the uh, uh, tentative predicate I and the object is understood to be uh, definite, uh, just like in John came in, Mary noticed. Uh, so this would be similar to that. Right? Now, are there articles in dark here? Well, I think uh, it, is, it is at least uh, a language that has quite a lot of expressions that uh, are used like articles. There is the uh, indefinite article derived from the word so uh, for one. Um, uh, this is a, uh, a word that can be also used with mass nouns, with water, meaning a spot of water, for example, or a spot of grass. Um, uh, we have musio for plural, and we have deso uh, for uh, um, an indefinite article that is non-specific, that occurs in the scope of a modal operator. Focusing on that, for example, hunting the saw on the man, uh, a man will possibly come and this man is unspecified. So the person who told me the story uh, said, some man or other will come and take a picture of this wonderful tree. Yeah. Um, uh, then we have a definite article. Uh, I try to argue for that with the development of the demonstrative key uh, as a very frequent device to refer back to an entity that was introduced before. Uh, but we also find cases, many cases of bare nouns that can be interpreted as, bear, as either indefinite or definite as well. So it's certainly not a language that, that has full-fledged articles like English or French. Yeah, this is very important. So for example, um, we find a indefinite use of the bare noun one thing, and in this sentence here, people were numerous uh, there, which means capital uh, uh, numerous to many. Uh, we find uh, an indefinite object here, so they killed uh, cattle. It's very clear from the context that this is not definite. Um, uh, but we also find definite interpretations like here. The pig attacked me uh, so that uh, it could uh, hold me. We find the word for a pig without any um, uh, uh, demonstrative here. So it's a language that it would be great to zoom back in history that might be developing articles or it might be in a state where it lives <coughs> happily with, uh, with uh, the use of articles uh, in some contexts and um, the non-use in others, I don't know. Now, let's go to associative anaphora, the main topic of the talk here. Uh, what is it? Uh, well, uh, these are cases like, uh, in this case here in English, uh, at the creek, there stood a little house. Uh, the door was sh shut. The door refers, of course, to the door of the house here. In English, we could uh, say its door here as well, uh, or probably equally well. In German, for example, the possessive would be out because somehow it doesn't really go very well with, um, with inanimates here. So we would have to use in German the definite article. Uh, in dark here, uh, the, the demonstrative here is totally out here. I don't know about the bare uh, noun here, but the correct way to express this relationship that we, we refer to the door of the house would be this um, marker N here. Bokara uh, Ben, its door. <coughs> yeah. um, this is sort of similar to Tislama. So, uh, my attempt here goes up long river once one house is stopped uh, door blown and is such this would be the correct way I think to refer to the door here of the house in this Lamar so this is a well known phenomenon uh, running under different names bridging you find quite often for example I think associative uh, definites or associative anaphora is maybe the best term and I would like to sort of uh, um, use this term here for the phenomenon <laughs> itself. There's lots of literature about that, uh, research about 
Uh, processing of these anaphores, it is evident from several studies that they are slightly more difficult to proce uh, process than straight definites. Um, uh, uh, by eye-tracking studies, also by EEG studies, um, and um, um, yeah, there is a nice overview here if you want to know uh, about the general research uh, situation uh, on this phenomenon. Now, um, uh, this use of N in Dahi seems to point to a specialized article for a social activity in some sense. And indeed, this has been discussed. Uh, I have some references to existing literature here. So Himmelmann, in his survey, talks about possessive articles that occur in uh, Austronesian languages, like Balinese, for example, but also in, in Semitic. Braurut uh, is a study quite interesting about um, <coughs> uh, possessive articles in Uralic languages. Uh, here, this is in Komi, you find here uh, in the forest the snow melted uh, already, and you find here snow possessive, so it's snow, literally. And um, uh, this can be extended uh, to entities given in the situation. This happened in Yucatec Maya, for example. Um, here you have to call the shaman, and you find here that the word for shaman um, has the possessive, so it's shaman, and it means the shaman of the place. Yeah. Uh, yeah, whoever this is, but the local shaman in some sense. So you find this extension of the possessive here. Um, uh, Braurut observes that the extended use of possessives in this way often is also accompanied with the extended use of demonstratives uh, for the non-associative uh, use. And if one could argue that this is a scenario where a language uh, starts to not like bare nouns uh, when they refer to given entities in general, but makes a distinction between, between uh, associative definiteness and non-associative regular definiteness. Now, let's look shortly at the uses of N in Dahe. We find it in partitive uses, like here, there's a story where two kids are introduced and they refer, uh, we find references to the firstborn and the secondborn with N. Uh, Kamuen, the firstborn uh, of them, and Tatuen, uh, the secondborn uh, of them. So a kind of partitive use. Uh, here in this uh, story here, this is a story about a monkey. There are no monkeys in, um, in Amden, but there are stories about monkeys. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> uh, and so there is a monkey that is introduced here, and they refer to the heart of the monkey uh, with um, uh, this marker N, a kind of partitive use as well. Um, Non-partitive uses. Uh, here we, um, uh, uh, we find that... Uh, 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 possessions, the possessions of the speaker are introduced, and the um, mon, the, mon, uh, the monetary worth of it is marked with n. So the worth of it, uh, certainly not part of it. Yeah, um, we find cases where a plant is introduced, and the food that the plant provides is marked with n. Uh, other examples, uh, in this example here, a kind of bag is introduced for a particular purpose, and then we find the sentence, uh, nowadays we don't have such baskets, uh, such baskets anymore. So Aragoen, uh, the basket that belongs to the purpose that was talked about before, so a subkind of this basket, of this kind of basket. We can refer to uh, the event of a verbal action that was described before. Like here, uh, he was playing music with a child who thought that the playing was very good. So play, this is of course the sonar, no end, this of course is the playing of it. Yeah. Um, uh, we can refer from a plan to the time of the plan. Uh, so a bird wanted to go to be the garden, uh, and they had determined the date, so the woman, the time of it, of the plan when they wanted to go to the garden. Uh, 
we can go from an action to the place of the action. So uh, this is the story, that I think Alex mentioned the story of the man who looked for his wife in the hole of the devils and, and here the, the story of the bones of his wife fell down and the man stayed on the other side of where the bones fell down. So the uh, 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 place of an action. Or kinship relations, I skipped that here. So um, it's, I think, quite clear that uh, we find a frequent use of, uh, of N for this purpose. Um, N itself is clearly related to the third uh, person uh, singular possessive suffix, which is N as well. So the uh, uh, historical relation is quite clear. Um, um, uh, I skip over this. Uh, uh, right now, um, uh, we find some other uses of N, but uh, what I would like to stress is that <coughs> Frau Ruth's diagnostics for the development of an associative uh, article are pretty much satisfied. I think we find a extended use of, of possessives for associative uh, anaphors here. Uh, at the same time, you also find an extended use of demonstratives of Kie at the same time. And she observes this for oralic languages and for Semitic languages uh, as well. Um, we also find uh, that um, real possessives and associative anaphors are expressed in different ways. So for example, that I want to say his blood, this is da, no, this is the transitive writer in you, so the blood of him. Um, uh, we can use um, uh, uh, relational nouns like yen, uh, but um, there is a difference between da, no, no, and da, n. Uh, da, n would be the associative uh, article of some entity that was uh, introduced before. So I think there uh, we see a difference between, uh, between um, a regular possessive and this uh, associative uh, anaphor. And uh, this actually is the end. Um, uh, there's still stuff uh, to investigate. So I don't know, for example, whether the associative anaphor, I will test this out, can be used for something that is not given in the linguistic context, but in the situational context. I don't know about that. So uh, I want to data about that. S um, yeah, that's the end <coughs> of my talk. So I think that uh, the category of associative uh, anaphors is something very interesting that we should pay more attention to. Thanks. Thank you so much. There is any question? Um, it's inter interesting that we have in, in Nafsan there is kanen, which has the same function. I mean, it, it's of it. I just translated it as of it. Um, but I did test if it had, because the N could be a third singular in a direct possessive. Uh, I tested it for plurals, and it's, it's not. It's a fixed form, can N. Oh, yeah, it's a fixed yeah. form, I see. Yeah. I see. Oh, yeah. mm. Yeah. So, yeah, in um, North Ambrim, it's very similar, but it's the, um, we have the, um, I guess, what you're calling the nominal transitivizer. So yes, linking yeah. two nouns is yeah. is that that's ne. Yeah. Uh, it's the same in North Ambrim. Yeah. And then um, the associative um, anaphor is nan, which is the third person singular inflected form of ne. Yeah. And that's the only way it inflects is on the third person singular. So that's yeah. also used for possessives as well for internal body parts, sort of its heart. Um, but yeah. if it's my heart, it would use the nominal linker plus a, a pronominal form. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I mean, it's uh, clearly related forms there. Yeah. And maybe you, you'll, you just lost the initial consonant for some mm -hmm. reason. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just to add to that picture, in Southeast Ambrim, the equivalent form is nen. Um, but I think that's also restricted to singular possessors. And I think you can't really use it with animate possessors. You're more likely to use the third person singular um, nan uh -huh. instead. So I think there's something going on there as well. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh, so, uh, oddly enough, uh, Motlav has also ne going to nan. So, I mean, it's uh, the same actual forms. Uh, in he is e going to in, but same same things. Uh, <coughs> so, in in Hiwa, uh, I noticed that 
one can say that the, the, the thing has gone all the way to not, not only associative anaphora, but anaphora, and, you know, I mean, encodes anaphora, but, uh, but not uh, the definiteness when it's not anaphoric. So, so uh, you can't use it for, I'm going back to the village. Mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you said, uh, I'm going back to village in or nan, <laughs> or this one, yeah. you know, it would be, it's possible, I mean, it's grammatical to say that, yeah. but it would be the, the village associated to what s whatever we about? said. So uh, yes, you yeah. could use it if you said, you know, there's a, there's a party next week in the other village, and I won't be able to go to the village of it, or, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, but you can't use it uh, to sort of, uh, how would you call that, uh, that sort of definite when it's sort of shared reference to, to the normal, you know, yeah. village. Thank you. Really interesting. Uh, in Saliba, I'm pretty sure we just use a straightforward direct possessive uh, with, with no formal distinctions to normal possessive constructions Still for this kind of function. And I have a question about your definite article, which also plays a role there. Yeah. Um, in w w let's say, what type of definite article is it? Because there's a distinction in, in some part of the literature between um, semantically definite versus pragmatically definite. I think they're sometimes called, so there's some articles which are actually not definite, but purely anaphoric. Yeah. And one test case or one scenario where such articles may behave differently is uh, that they do would not mark entities which are definite at first mention, as in the moon, the sun, or Papua New Guinea. Um, and some languages have both. And I think our standard of description of articles is still very bad. And I include myself, I basically had no idea when I looked at stuff, but we call things definite articles which are not. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, anaphoric articles are assumed to be very rare cross-linguistically, and I have a suspicion that they're actually very common on oceanic. So we have to do a better job in distinguishing that. So do you, do you have, do you have any idea? It's, it's my, uh, well, uh, I'm really very certain that you couldn't use here with the moon or the sun, so this would really be very hot. Okay, yeah. so then, then it might be this kind of sim uh, pragmatically, I think that's Loebner again who makes that distinction yeah. and, and mm -hmm. Himmelmann who discusses that. Yeah. So, so it might be an anaphoric tracker, anaphoric article rather than definite in the kind of more hardcore sense or more perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah I said so, uh, it's an it's a, uh, a anaphoric definite article. Yeah, yeah great, thank yeah. you. Um, unfortunately, I haven't read Himmelmann's article on the Indonesian Nia, um, but for the last example, um, something like this, in Indonesian, you could definitely get the Nia in these cases, also with the moon and the sun. Um, you can use this third person um, cleric, um, Bulan Nia, Trang, yeah. the, 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 the I think moon. He mentions this uh, actually, and this okay. is one of the extensions that uh, Braulu uh, mentions as well, that it can be extended to to uh, situation uh, specific uh, definites, including then the moon and the sun uh, and so on, which is not the case for dark. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but so you, you're pro probably sure about the last one. Um, you couldn't use the moon and N in dark here. So the this uh, article N with the moon would wouldn't yeah, be possible. About another sun with a, uh, okay. or, uh, another planet or so, maybe yes, but we <laughs> okay. never tested that, but. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So in Indonesian, if you drop this nya, it yeah. would be ambiguous with um, saying a bright moon. Uh -huh. So um, because the adjective follows or uh -huh. whatever, call uh -huh. it, yeah. Uh -huh. So if you don't, if you didn't use this nya, uh -huh. it could be an ambiguous sentence. 